Hello everyone, it's me Sanjay Vasu back again for another video. This time we're going to be doing Cambridge Law Secondary Progression Test for State 7, Mathematics Paper 2. Let's start. Question 1. Here's a list of numbers. 6, 10, 19, 25, 35, 40, 48. From the list, write down a multiple of 12. Out of these numbers, only 48 is a multiple of 12 be a prime number there's only one prime number which is 19 in this list and see a square number 6 is not 10 is not 19 not it's 25 since 5 squared is equal to 25 it can also be minus 5 squared question 2 a formula used in science is v equals u plus 80 Work out the value of v when u is equal to 7, a equals 5, and t is equal to 9. So we can just substitute 7 plus 5 into 9, and that's equal to 7 plus 45, which is 52. That's the answer. Question 3. 47 students go to a sports center in buses. A bus can hold 14 students. Find the number of buses needed. So that's equal to 47 divided by 14. And that will be 3 with a remainder of 5. And then for the remaining 5 students, we also need another bus. That means we add 1 to 3. That means we get 4 buses. That's the answer. Question 4. 6 people estimate the mass of a cake in kilograms. So the estimates are here for whichever name they are. A. Write down the correct name to complete these statements. Dash gives the smallest estimate. So dash means which name. The smallest number here is 0 0.385. Therefore, Hassan gives the smallest one. And the largest estimate is given by Jamila. Because 0 0.8 is greater than all the others. B. The actual mass of the cake is 0 0.68 kg. Write down the name of the person whose estimate is closest to the actual mass. We need to find out the difference between each of these six people's estimates and the actual mass of the cake. So the difference between Oliver's estimate and the mass is 0 0.75 minus 0 0.68, 0 0.07 kilograms. Next for Jamila's estimate, it's 0 0.12 kilograms difference for anastasia's estimate 0 0.03 kilograms difference hassan's estimate 0 0.295 kilograms difference now for yusuf it is 0 0.68 minus 0 0.6 0 0.08 kilograms difference and blessy's one is 0 0.799 minus 0 0.68 which is 0 0.119 kilogram difference and out of these, Anastasia's one has the least difference. That's why hers is the closest to the actual mass. That's the answer. Question 5. Here's an equilateral triangle drawn an isometric grid. By drawing one straight line to the triangle, it's possible to divide into two right angle triangles. A. Draw one straight line to the triangle to divide into a trapezium and an equilateral triangle. So in reality, we can use a straight line, which is vertical. It can be here, 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 or here. And any one of those five lines will divide it into a trapezium, like this, or something like this also. An equilateral triangle like this, or this. That's the answer. B. Draw two straight lines to the triangle to divide into a rhombus and two equilateral triangles. So let's use the same thing we used in the previous one. This. Now we have one equilateral triangle and a trapezium. We can divide this trapezium into a rhombus and one equilateral triangle because we have another one over here. So one equilateral triangle can be like this. Now we have two equilateral triangles and one rhombus, like needed in the question. You can draw this and this as well instead of this. 
That's the answer. Question six. The scale shows measurements in kilograms. Write down the measurements shown on the scale in grams. So first thing we need to find out is how much is this in kilograms. So when zero to zero point five, there are ten spaces over here, ten markings. That means for one marking is an increase of zero point zero five kg. How? It's 0 0.5 divided by 10 because 0 0.5 is over here and 10 is the number of markings. Now we're going to the markings more than 0 0.5. That means three markings is equal to 0 0.05 into 3, 0 0.15. And then the scale value is equal to when we add 0 0.5 it becomes 0 0.65 kilograms and that's equal to 650 grams that's the answer question seven write down the name of the solid with properties in the table number of faces five number of edges nine number of vertices six so out of all the solids a triangular prism has all the properties which are given here it has five faces nine edges and six vertices how so the number of faces are one two triangles and one two three rectangles that are five faces next for the edges you have one two three four five six seven eight nine edges that's correct as well now for the vertices we have one two three four five six vertices so that's also correct that's why the answer is triangular prism that's the answer question eight some students take a test the marks are shown in the frequency diagram. A. Write down the range of marks. So the range is the largest minus the smallest. 10 minus 4 because 4 is the smallest with a value. 10 minus 4 is 6. B. Find the total number of students who took the test. So there's one student here. B. 5, 7, 8, 7. So when we add all of this up, we get the number of 31. C. Find the median mark. So over here we have 31 students who took the test. And we need to find the median mark, which means the middle student out of 31 students, what mark did he get in the range of 4 to 10? So the middle student is the 16th student since 1 plus 31, which is the start and end, first student and last student, divide that by 2, becomes 16. So 16 student, we need to find how much marks he gets. So we have one student here, then four students total, nine students total, and 16 students total. So once we get to eight marks, there are 16 students in total. And the 16th student is included in that. That's why the answer is eight marks. That's the answer. Question nine. Complete the missing digits in this subtraction. Dash 2.33 minus 14.9 is equal to 27.9 dash. So first to find this digit, we can borrow from here to get 13. 13 minus 9, 4. Now 2 minus something is like. So when we borrow from here, we get 12. 12 minus what is 9? 3, right? So there's a 3 there. And now 11 minus 4 is 7, right? So this becomes 11 here. And we need to borrow from here for that. So when we subtract 1 from this number, we subtract another 1, we get 2. The first subtraction is borrowing. Second one is over here. So we put 4 here. We minus 1 for borrowing. It becomes 3. 3 minus 1 is 2. So the number here is 4. That's the answer. And actually, this one becomes 3 once we've borrowed it, but the original number is 4.
That's the answer. Question 10. Find the order of rotational symmetry for each of these two dimensional shapes. The first one's been done for you. Order 2 for this one. And this one is actually order 1 because look at this irregular shape. Next one is just a hexagon, which is order 6. The next one has a triangle in the middle with three divisions, and therefore it's order 3. That's the answer. Question 11. Carlos makes a fruit drink by mixing orange juice and grapefruit juice. The ratio of orange to grapefruit juice is 3 to 1. He makes 10 liters of the drink. Work out how much orange juice he uses. So, total number of parts equals 3 plus 1, which is 4. These four parts are actually 10 liters. That means one part equals 2.5 liters because it's 10 divided by 4. And now three parts for the orange juice is 2.5 into 3, which is equal to 7.5 liters. That's the answer. Question 12. Draw the line x equals 2 on the grid. So we need to draw a line where all the points have the x value of 2. That line is always a vertical line and that line, which is x equals 2, passes through the point 2, comma, 0. That's the answer. Question 13. Two classes take the same geography test. The median range for each class is shown. So the class 7P and 7T have different means and different ranges. So Pia says, these data show that 7P did better in the geography test than 7T. Why is Pia wrong? Explain this. So you can see for 7P, the mean is 56, and for 7T, it is 60. So if the mean is 60, that's greater than 56. That means the students overall did a bit better in 7T than 7P. So P is wrong because the mean of class 7T is greater than the mean of class 7P. That's the answer. Question 14. They will show some information about two train journeys. The departure time, arrival time, and the length of train journey. Complete the table. So departure and arrival are 8.45 and 1.15 p.m. respectively. Now we subtract this to get the length of train journey. 13.15 minus 8.45. We can borrow it like this. And we get 4 hours and 30 minutes. And our next one, the departure is not given, arrival and length are given. You can use the timeline method. So 605 is arrival. And then we minus 6 hours and 5 minutes. We have a midnight, which is in the middle of the train journey. And that means there are... How much time left? 8.25 minus 6.05. 8.25 and 6.05. And subtract, we get 2.20. So 2 hours, 20 minutes left. You can see here. And then if we subtract this 2 hours, 20 minutes, we will get 21.40 the previous day. That's the answer. Question 15. You're the ones to find out whether boys spend more time playing sports than girls. He decides to do a survey. Take the questions that are relevant for a survey. Are you a boy or girl? How old are you? How many hours do you play sports? This week and do you like football? We need to find out information about the gender because boys and girls are being compared. And we need to find out about how much time they play sports. So the gender, boy or girl. How old are you? It doesn't say in the question here that we need to take into account the age of the boy or girl. So that's not there. How many hours do you play sports this week? That's what's being compared. More time playing that sports. That means that's also ticked. Do you like football? Irrelevant to the question once again. That's the answer. Question 16. Work out the surface area of this cube. You may use this net to help you. So if this is a cube, 
all of the sides are 5 centimeters. So the length, width, and height are all 5 centimeters. We can use a formula. The surface area of a cube is 6 into side squared. The side squares there, they have one face and there are six faces. So the side is 5 centimeters. 6 into 5 squared, that's equal to 6 into 25, which is equal to 150 centimeters squared. That's the answer. Question 17. Rajiv draws a rectangle ABCD. The coordinates of three of the vertices are A equals 1, 1, B equals 3, 1, and C equals 3, 2. Find the coordinates of D. So I'm going to draw a mini graph here to show exactly what is going on. So 0, 1, 2, 3 on the y-axis and 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 on the x-axis. So this is just a very easy representation. Point A is over here. Point B is 3, 1. Point C is 3, 2. And point D should complete the rectangle A, B, C, D. So the rectangle will obviously look something like this. And these will be straight lines. So this side and this side should be equal. That means that the line should be one unit long. So one unit from B to C over here. And that means same thing from A to D. So D can be over here. And now we can complete the full rectangle. Now what are the coordinates of point D? You can see over here that x is 1, y is 2, so d is equal to 1, 2. That's the answer. Question 18. Aiko and Lily both think of a whole number. Aiko's number is 2,000 when rounded to a nearest thousand. Lily's number is 1,900 when rounded to a nearest hundred. Aiko says, my number must be larger than Lily's number. Take to show if Aiko is correct. Yes or no? Explain your answer. The answer is no. Because they're rounded to different numbers. So Aiko's number, Aiko's number could be 1500, but Lily's number could be 1949. So if we round 1,500 to the nearest 1,000, we get 2,000. 1,949 to the nearest 100 is 1,900. But still, in this case, Lily's number is greater than Aiko's number. And Aiko says that hers must be larger. But in this case, it's not. Therefore, this is false. Question 19. M equals time in minutes. Complete the sentences with the correct units. The first one's been done for you. M by 60 gives time in dash, hours. M by 16 to 24 give time in dash. So what number do you think 24 relates to? Days. Because there's 24 hours in one day. M by 16 to 24 into 7. What does this relate to? It gives time in weeks. That's the answer. Question 20. The diagram shows three angles on line AD, which is this line. Angle AOB is equal to 40 degrees. Angle BOC is a right angle. Work out the size of angle COD. Let's label this first. Angle AOB is 40 degrees. Angle BOC is a right angle. And now angle COD, let's label it as X. So X plus 40 plus 90 is equal to 180. How do we say this? Because the angles on a straight line, in this case line AD, are always equal to 180 degrees. So add these three angles, you'll always get 180 no matter what. So this means x plus 130 is 180 and x equals 180 minus 130 which is 50 degrees. That's the answer. Question 21. Ahmed has two fair six-sided dice. One dice is red and the other is green. The faces of the red dice are numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 
The faces of the green dice are numbered 2, 3, 5, 6, 8, 8. Complete these sentences. Ahmed is more likely to throw an even number on the dash dice. And in the dash, we need to fill the color, the letter green, because they describe the dice. So there are 1, 2, 3 even numbers out of 6 numbers in the red dice. And out of 6 numbers in the green dice, there are 1, 2, 3, 4 even numbers. Therefore, the probability is higher in the green dice. It is impossible for Ahmed to roll a 1 on the dash dice. So where is there no 1? So there should not be a 1 in the chances for a dice. Like this one. There's no 1s. There's only 2, 3, 5, 6, and 2 8s. So the answer is once again the green dice. That's the answer. Question 22. The diagram shows two identical rectangles of length Q and width P. All measurements are in centimeters. Find the expression for the perimeter of the whole shape. So you can see two identical rectangles. There's a Q length here as well. This one. But what's over here? We have this length Q, P, P. But what what is this length? Because this length is P and this length is Q. That means we can write this length as Q minus P. And when you add this all up, P plus Q plus P plus Q plus P plus Q minus P plus Q. And we can do the math. Add up, it becomes 2P plus 4Q. That's the answer. This is in centimeters. Question 23. Here are five scores from a competition. 3, 4, 5, 2.5, and 6. Work out the mean score. We can add these up. And then divide by the number of terms, which is 5. And when we do that, we get 20.5 divided by 5. And that's equal to 4.1. That's the answer. Question 24. 50 women out of 70 own a bicycle. 110 men out of 150 own a bicycle. Gabriela says, the percentage of women who own a bicycle is less than the percentage of men. So, 50 by 70 into 100% is the percentage of women. And now when we do this, we get 500 by, seven, 500 by 7. And we can use a calculator for this. 500 divided by 7, which equals 71.428. And that's the percentage. This is the woman. Now for the men, it is 110 by 150 into 100%. Cancel the zeros. It's equal to 1100 divided by 15. And now let's do that on the calculator. 73.3%. And that's greater than... 71.428%. So the 71.428% is the percentage of women who own a bicycle. And 73.3% is the percentage of men who own a bicycle. Because the percentage of men is greater than the percentage of women, that means the percentage of women will be less. And that's what Gabriella says. So Gabriella's statement is correct. Question 25. A, B, C, D is a square. A rectangle is removed from corner C. The side of the square measures 2 meters. The rectangle that is being removed measures 30 centimeters by 20 centimeters. The full thing here is 2 meters. Work out the area of the shape that remains. Give your answer in square meters. So the area of square is equal to 2 squared, which is 4 square meters. Now, we can find the area of the rectangle. That's equal to 30 into 20, which is equal to 600 centimeters squared. When we convert this to meters squared, we get 0 0.06 meters squared. Now, the area of the remaining shape is equal to 4 minus 0 0.06, which is equal to 3.94 meters squared. That's the answer.
Question 26. The diagram shows two sides of a regular pentagon. So the sides are 6 cm, 6 cm, like that. Use a ruler and protractor to complete the pentagon accurately. I'm not going to actually do it. I'm just going to show you how you're supposed to do this. So the first step is to put the center of your protractor at the point here. And now mark the angle of 108 degrees since this is a regular pentagon. Mark a point which corresponds to that angle and now draw a line using a ruler of 6 centimeters that passes through this point. Now we can do the same thing to find the next one. Now we can mark a point here and draw a line through it. And now we can do this one more time for the final side. We can mark a point, draw a line through it. Now we can mark the angle here as 108 degrees and label it 6 centimeters here. That's the answer. Question 27. Find the difference between 7 by 10 and 5 by 8. Like your answer is a decimal. So 7 by 10 minus 5 by 8. Now, the LCM of these two is 40, so we can put a 40 down there. Now, we multiply 10 into 4, so we multiply 7 into 4 as well. 7 into 4 is 28. And then minus, because you multiply 8 into 5 to get 40, you have to multiply 5 into 5 as well. It's 25. 28 minus 25 by 40, which is equal to 3 by 40. Now, let's convert this to a decimal. 3 by 40 is actually equal to 15 by 200. How? We multiplied both sides by 5. And now that's equal to 7.5 by 100 or 75 by 1000. We're dividing it by 2 on both sides and then we're multiplying by 10 on both sides. And 75 by 1000 is equal to 0 0.075. That's the answer. And with this, I've come to the end of my video. Please like this video, subscribe to our channel, share this video with your friends, and comment on how you think this video was, and what you want us to upload in the future. With this, it's me, Sanjay Vasu, signing out. I'll see you in my next video. Goodbye.